Hey guys, and welcome back. This is Chosen Architect, and today we're gonna to be working on getting ourselves a mob spawner set up. So I hope you guys are ready. Hey, hey guys, Future Chosen here. Just wanted to let you guys know, if you didn't already, that you can get this world download for literally just becoming a dollar Patreon. That's it. Any tier Patreon can get this world download. And uh, guys, I just wanna say, a super thanks to all of my new patrons. I, I do appreciate you guys. So today I am back at it. And as you can see, my one villager has now turned into two villagers. I went ahead and made another one, tossed them in the farm. And this is the same farm I always use for making multiple villagers. It is a fantastic villager breeder. It just works. So, so long as it just works, I'm happy, <laughs> basically. Uh, these guys will farm this, they'll trade to each other, and there's a few beds, and they'll eventually, uh, you know, make uh, make a baby villager. So, that's the ultimate goal. Now, today, I want to work on mob farms. I want to work on getting actual mob farms up and running. And uh, I think I want to place it back behind this, and believe it or not, this is the perfect spot. Um, if we walk out all the way to the edge from the center, we will be at almost exactly... 24 blocks right here, which is exactly where we want our farm to start. Um, and I think I want to make it, you know, a standard farm that I can automate. And so uh, let's get to work on that. Now, luckily for us, the mod called Mob Grinding Utils is in here now um, after the update. And we have these things called Entity Conveyors. Um, and we can actually use these to build our mob farm, which is perfect. Um, I want to also, we, we could have used mob fans, like mob fans also work, but mobs do spawn on these entity conveyors. Um, and I also want uh, to grab, I don't know, maybe the mob masher is probably going to be a good thing to, to grab. We're also going to want definitely an absorption hopper. 100% going to want this. Um, I believe I've already made one. It's, I got a, a hopper that is down below that is working on our farm. So absorption hopper. And uh, Endermen can spawn in the farm that we're going to be making. So potentially getting an Ender inhibitor is also going to be a good idea. That is just going to prevent Endermen from teleporting. Um, and let's see. I mean, do I want to send them to the Mob Masher? Of course I do. Of course I want to. As soon as I can get this up and running, the better uh, our farm is going to be overall, I think. So I'm going to go ahead and craft everything up for this. As you can see, it's it's not horribly complicated. It literally just requires a few swords. <laughs> That's, and we have tons of iron at this point. So two of these bad boys, and we are ready to make this thing. So at the moment, I am working on building the uh, the actual spawner can, uh, chamber, and I decided to go with a 5x5 five five this time. I could have went with a 9x9. Nine nine. We might change that later on, but I do know even if I have a spawner in here, um, it will still be fine. We may have to modify these to fit some spawners, um, eventually I do want spawners in here, but this only needs to be three blocks tall like it is. So I'm going to go with this, at least for our starter one. Eventually I want to have, I kind of have a plan to have a spawner on all four corners. That way we can customize all of those spawners at our, you know, whim, uh, or on a whim. So let's see, I am missing my wand. <laughs> That's going to make this so much easier. Oh, the wand's just... I mean, this this, and then the building gadgets, those are two things that, man, are just super nice to have. By the way, I am using mineral logs. I think they look really good, along with the mineral down here. And uh, I'm going to also combine this and add that together. Now, what is going to cover this is going to be, going to be glass. Um, I'm going to have glass hooked up to this. Also add slabs here. There's going to be dark glass basically surrounding this thing. Um, but I do want my mob masher to basically, I guess it can go right here. This is going to get a redstone signal. Um, and then I need to send all of the mobs to it, basically pushing them on this conveyor belt here, uh, and having, I don't know which direction these face. Okay. So they face that way. Let me turn my magnet on that way. I know perfect. So I can just have them all face this way. And does it pick me? Okay, so it will kick me, so I need to be careful. Basically, I want it all pointing directly to this uh, mob grinder. So to walk uh, across these things, all you gotta do is hold shift and you should be good. Now, I went ahead and made some dark glass. This glass is amazing. 
because it blocks out light. So you can actually see inside your mob farm, which is kind of a nice little benefit. Um, and mobs will actually still spawn because no light's actually getting in. There we go. And perfect. Now all I gotta do is cover the front. Now I do need the absorption hopper. I believe this is the hopper that lets you, that, that pulls items out of an area. I, I gotta make sure. Um, I guess the best way is to toss an item inside. Is this the one that has the offset and everything? Yes. I think this one pulls items, yeah, through blocks. So I shouldn't have to worry about this too much. Let's go ahead and close this in. And we should get mob spawning, like, probably almost right away. It should be completely dark in here. Like, technically. Let's go ahead and get that, uh... Let's get that mob platform right there. Let's get it turned on. We need a lever to turn it on. And I should be able to get to it from down here. Since this is sort of connected. And it should be only blue block right here. So if I flip that on, now it should be spinning. And should be ready to start crushing some mobs. I hope this works <laughs> as like a, a basic mob spawner right now. Um, let's also grab this. And then we're going to configure this by showing the area and setting it up so that way it encapsulates this area. So I need to find out. I know this is facing north, so I guess if we expand north, that's going the wrong way. There we go. Now it is covering this entire 5x5 five five area, which is perfect. Exactly what I want. Um, and then I probably want to get some sort of chest for right now just to sort of buffer items. Let's go ahead and get a chest, two chests, and then a tank. Now this mod actually has a singularity tank, um, which we should be able to make. Just regular glass. Will it accept dark glass? No, it doesn't. Uh, let's see, glass. Of course I'm out. <laughs> I'm gonna have to get some cooked up, uh, which should take, yeah, but, but a second. <laughs> Or a little blocked up as you can see. So at this point you can see it's nice and dark in there. I Don't know if lights able to pass through the bottom. Can I f7 this? Okay, I'm getting nothing while f7ing This doesn't light up or anything um, Let me go ahead and place the tanks here. I think this expands right and then double chest We'll set the uh, so if this is the east should be fluid west should be item Perfect, just like it's supposed to be. I mean, I, if anything, all I need to do is probably cap the bottom, and I need to do that anyways. Um, so let's go ahead and slab the bottom up with some oak slabs, just to make sure that nothing can, no light can really get through, because that's one of the main issues I think that this could potentially have. Actually, you know what, I don't know. So I've been sitting here for a little while, and I'm right where I should be, I have a sneaking suspicion that even though those blocks say mobs can spawn on them, I don't think they are. So we might need to replace all of these and maybe go with Dark Utilities vector plates instead or fans. So by the way, if you're wondering how I show this, all you gotta do is hit F7 and that's gonna show basically where mobs can spawn. But uh, I decided to go with vector plates. So here are the uh, the vector plates I went ahead and made up. By the way, if you're wanting to know where I got all the black dye, well, Batania comes in clutch when it comes to that. All you're gonna need is uh, any of the petals and a mortar pestle, and bam, we have black dye. No need to worry about really anything because B Batania always seems to have your back. Like always. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, finish getting the vector plates in. Now, they, mobs definitely should spawn normally on these. I just, I really feel like that was the issue. Like, we should have mobs spawning. There should be no reason. I checked this with just the glass and like a regular block, and it shows that there was spawnable space. It definitely seems a lot darker in there now. So, even with it being daytime, we should have mobs spawning when I just step over here. I, I We should, anyways. So, so yeah, I had a spider spawn. Oh, now they're spawning. Look at that. So we do have mobs that are now spawning. I did restart the pack. I don't know if that made a difference. I think the, the issue is the fact that the spawn platform 
it's just not very big. I mean, it's, it is a small platform. It's only a five by five. If I would have made it a nine by nine, it would be a little bit bigger, but as, as you can see, I'm standing right here. Mobs are now starting to spawn, which is a, a good sign. Very good sign. Um, now I do want to upgrade this like almost immediately. And I was thinking we haven't gone to the nether yet, nor have I, uh, well made a, a nice bag. This is something I, I do want to eventually make. Um, but anyways, I do want to make a jet pack. So the jetpack um, is, is really nice. So let's go ahead and uh, work towards making this. If we go to the nether, which is a void, we are going to need a jetpack and we should be able to grab a, uh, a spawner today, hopefully. Um, so I'm going to grab a stone jetpack. Let's go ahead and just make the, the base, I guess. All we need is um, some stone and a bunch of iron. I think if I remember correctly, I've made this so many times. 15 is the exact number we need in order to make all the stuff for this or the base one here. It's, it's gotta be 15, I think. So two thrusters, let's just two thrusters. Oh, stone. <laughs> um, don't know why I don't have any stone. I seem to uh, just never cook any, which just seems crazy to me. So I'm going to go ahead and get uh, a bunch of stone actually cooked up this time. Oh yeah, by the way, before you make a stone one, you have to make a wooden one. Uh, before you can make the iron one, of course you have to step it up. That's, uh, duh. By the way, I don't have any leather. Um, so hopefully our mob farm kicks in soon. Actually, you know what? We can take the rotten flesh and I think we can throw it inside here. Ah, and it turns into leather. leather. Yeah, the drying basin. Perfect. That kind of solves that dilemma, doesn't it? All right, so wooden jet pack, leather strap. It's actually really simple to make these. Um, like I said, I believe it's 15 coils though that you do need in order to make just one. So five, I think it's five wooden cells because you're gonna have two thrusters that are require two furnaces, two thrusters. Um, is it that? Yes, perfect. And then you need the battery and then the battery, yeah, and then overall, there we go, wooden jetpack. Then we should be able to make the stone jetpack like that. And then all we need is the iron jetpack, which is going to require advanced thrusters. Yes, we get 15 of these as well. Same recipe. Um, the problem with going higher than like iron and stuff is the uh, it, it's you start to encounter some issues. At least I've noticed uh, you start to encounter some issues with speed. It just becomes way too fast. Like the propel the propulsion forward becomes like crazy ridiculous. So I don't know if that's the thing. If that's for you, go for it. For me, it's I think iron is a good stopping point. And then having the uh, um, the wireless flux over here, this actually helps you keep charged, which uh, is good. Even when you're cross going cross dimensional. So that should charge up. While it's in our inventory, of course, this is running, which is taking a lot of our power away from here. Um, if I take a look at this, you can see the power is going up. 1000 RF per tick being limited by this thing, though. So I just noticed our mob farm is actually working really good. I wasn't um, I, I don't know why it wasn't working earlier, but just restarting the pack and bam, it's it's up and running pretty good. Like I'm just standing over here, just minding my own and we got Enderman in here. We got catalytic or cladalizing glands already that's awesome look at that we got zombie hearts we're getting rib bones endermen are spawning which i didn't even put the uh ender inhibitor on here but now i am you can turn it on and off by the way and that should help uh, prevent those uh pesky endermen from accidentally teleporting when they take damage into your base you know that speed issue i was talking about how with these jetpacks they're ridiculously fast you can see how quickly this is i'm in hover mode and I'm, I'm going incredibly fast. Well, all you got to do is uh, use comma to reduce it by 80% or hit comma again to reduce it by 60%. Take this all the way down to 20%. Look how slow it is now. And then period to increase it. <laughs> what? That must have been added. Like, I don't remember that being a thing. But I did check the... Uh, I did check the, um, the control or the key bindings. And yeah, that's the case. Inside my quest book, by the way, I did complete the uh, wooden jetpack. 
which I ended up getting a battery, oh, which actually has a nice little 100K buffer on it. That's not horrible. That's from the power mod. And that's the starter version. And it does have a um, Kuro, a Kuros slot or Curious slot. At least that's the, I think it's what it's called. Yeah, they should be able to go into here inside the, I believe it's the next slot. <laughs> I don't actually know. So I guess at this point, it's uh, it's time to go to the nether. Um, I think behind here, I'm gonna go ahead and place, this will be a temporary portal, I think, until we get waystones, then we won't even need a portal anymore. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and make it the perfect shape. Like literally the perfect shape, right? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And, oh, it's gonna be perfect, right? One, two, three, four, five. And perfect. A perfect square. Nice. Now, before I go in here, there's really only one thing I want. To find a fortress, I have also, I have no armor. So we probably want to get some armor first. And luckily we've dived into Batania a tad bit and we should be able to get a little bit of armor. Yeah, that's plenty. 39? Yeah. Okay, so we should be able to make ourselves some mana steel armor, which is not horrible, a little bit better than iron. Um, of course, you can always, you know, go to the uh, the nether with regular iron. It's not too bad. Um, let's see. We also need chest piece, which actually... Can we do the chest piece? Is the jetpack... It has three armor on it, so technically we won't have a full set, but because we'll have the jetpack, and you can't combine this with your armor unfortunately, but what I can do is I can put it in the cosmetic part and then put the jetpack on. And now it looks like we have a full set on, <laughs> even though technically we, we don't, we have a, a jetpack on. Um, anyways, I also need some sawdust, which I'm going to need a sapling. You know what? Hammer. Let's get a hammer. Um, because I want to make a cardboard box. Uh, the best way to do that is probably to just take down a tree. Actually, you know what? This tree over here is kind of annoying. So I'm going to get rid of this tree. How much did I get of that? Perfect. We can use that to make a cardboard box, which allows me to pick up a spawner. Surprisingly, it it really does. Of course there is right here. Um, Even though Forbidden Arcanus has changed it a little bit, it says right here can save you from fire damage for up to 30 seconds is actually kind of nice and all we need is a skeleton skull that actually changes things because we we don't have a skeleton skull yet right no we definitely don't have a, an actual skull that requires all of this stuff <laughs> okay so never mind we're gonna have to deal with the fire damage good thing we have fruit salad i guess and hopefully we can just rush in and rush out grab the spawner and then get out of there um, yeah, this will be interesting. I, I just remembered as well, um, this would probably be a good time to use our mini-map. Um, as much as I don't really want to, we do need to add a waypoint and add the portal. And then, uh, I'm going to go into my settings and turn it on top right. There we go. That way we can kind of see this <laughs> and get back to it, hopefully. Um, I guess we can just go and hopefully we end up finding a fortress. I need to keep an eye on my mini map and keep an eye on my, uh, Y level. As you can see, it's at 90. Hopefully we can find a fortress. Hopefully structures spawn. That'd be kind of upsetting if they don't even spawn, uh, at all. Hmm. Okay. I was getting worried for a moment and I was like, oh my God, they don't spawn, <laughs> but they do. They definitely do spawn. Uh, as you can see, I'm already being attacked. Rush in. Let's grab this bad boy. Don't die. No. Eat. I need to eat. Oh, gosh. That was a close one. That was that was too close. I did get it, though. <laughs> oh, that was too close for comfort way too close. So unfortunately to fit this spawner, I'm going to have to change this. I wasn't actually expecting to get into the spawner this quickly. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to change this whole setup and, uh, make it a nine by nine area. 
Uh, which isn't going to be too horrible. Let's see. Let's grab some logs. And I guess we can go ahead and expand this out just a little bit. Let's see. Cobble. And we'll make it that nice looking cobble. There we go. And we're going to expand this out. So uh, right now it is a five. Right? One, two, three. And then four, five, six. And then one more block out. We'll make it where I need to place this log. And uh, this also needs to be three here and then two higher. Yes, two taller <laughs> in order for this to work better. And I can still leave the wood here. I think that'll actually look a little bit better. Actually, no, this, this wood has to go. So with this setup, we're almost done. Like I'm already getting the build going. Look at this. We have our dark glass set up. Things are looking mighty fine. This is still going to work. We need to grab our vector plates. And I think I'm going to need a little bit more than the, the, the amount that I have. Um, but hey, this is this should work. Let's go ahead and make that make sure that sets there. Basically, just need to make a few more vector plates, and I think we're going to be fine. Oh, this is I'm kind of excited. This means uh, we can get some more Batania mana stuff going on. We're going to have some more fuel, um, mainly for the Batania thing, like uh, having um, Having blaze rods is going to be nice in general. Oh, going to unlock so many different things. So let's go ahead and do this and hopefully I die. I should probably turn that off, you know, for worker safety, but uh, I'm going to, I'm going to go for it without it. So I'm going to rush over here and oh, hold shift, stand on this block, place the spawner down, break that, and then hurry up and place uh, a comparator on here. That is going to lock this thing out. And then we should be able to use a lever on it to turn it on and off. Go ahead and break this. And uh, I'm going to make my way out of here and uh, finish up the rest of the glass. Let's see. We just need to finish up a tiny little bit of the glass. And I need just enough space for me to be able to walk through here and get out after turning this thing on. There we go. And close it up. And they shouldn't be able to see me anymore. Regular mobs should still also spawn in there. So it's like a multi-purpose mob spawner. Um, so we should be able to stand back here. Uh, actually, we can't stand all the way back here because you can see that this spawner actually turns off if we get too far away. So to, in order for it to work, we need to be here, but we will fix that eventually. Um, all we need to do is kill a, uh, a wither, which is not super, super difficult. But yeah, we still need to kill a wither. We're gonna have to do it a, the regular way because unless we go to the uh, the end, now that I think about it, the end, technically, we could probably still use the end to kill the wither the very special way. Well, guys, we're gonna have to thank the sponsor of today's video. And uh, by the way, that is going to go to Rosemary Bullers. Thank you so much for your amazing support over on Patreon. And by the way, if you are a Patreon of any tier, be sure to get your world download. This world download will be available for you guys. Um, of course, you can also find that on the Discord. The link will be there on Discord. It'll also be down linked in the comment section or in the, not in the comment section, it'll be linked in the um, description down below. Uh, but like I said, it'll also be posted over on Discord. So if you've not already joined the Discord, be sure to do that. You don't even have to be a Patreon to join that. We do have an awesome community over there, and we are a partner Discord. Guys, I'd really appreciate it if you join, and uh, also if you click that subscribe button, I'd really appreciate it as well, and give this video a huge thumbs up. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I'll see you in the next one, and as always, thanks for watching.